Before I begin to relate the foundation and history of the rather short-lived Sydney Festival Ballet Company, I should first like to talk about the fellow whose dream it was to establish a ballet company for the city of Sydney. He was William Gill, and during my talk I will also refer to him uh, as Bill. William was born in Brisbane. He showed at a very young age a passion for theatrical participation and became a particularly skilled and enthusiastic young singer and dancer. And fortunately, he was greatly encouraged by his parents. He was quite young when he became a member of the Peters Radio Unit uh, in Brisbane called the Peters Pals and spent several years as a member of that entertainment group. His training in classical ballet was done at the Phyllis Danaher School of Ballet in Brisbane, where he excelled in all of his Royal Academy of Dancing examinations. And William was also a member of Phyllis Danaher's Ballet Theatre of Queensland, and he gained the role of soloist in some productions there. In 1957, he won a scholarship to the Borovansky Ballet School in Melbourne for three years. He became a corps de ballet dancer for the uh, Borovansky Ballet. Here are two photographs of William dancing as one of the Ivans in Borovansky's Sleeping Princess. And here we see him again in the second act of The Nutcracker. When Edward Borovansky died in 1959, the company was taken over by the English dancer choreographer Peggy Van Prague. But uh, William didn't join the newly formed Australian Ballet. Instead, he decided, along with other dancers from the company, to go to London to gain further experience as a professional ballet dancer. He successfully auditioned for London's Festival Ballet, and from 1960 until 1963, he was a member of that particular ballet company, which toured extensively throughout England and Europe. He also worked on television and had some success in the modelling field. Bill returned to Australia in 1963 and immediately joined the company of Noel Coward's musical Sail Away. And after that, he was in Annie Get Your Gun for a while with Evie Hayes. It was in December of 1963 that I met William and we quickly became close friends and partners in a relationship that lasted for 40 years. Bill had just been appointed as choreographer for the television channel BTQ7 in his hometown of Brisbane. After some months there, he was unhappy with the job and returned to Sydney. Always on the lookout for work, Bill became a member of Channel 10's variety show hosted by Mike Walsh called Ten on the Town with Carlo Carter and Bill McGrath. He danced for a while at the Doncaster Theatre Restaurant, where the stars were Bill French, Sheila Bradley, and Barry O'Dowd. In 1967, William was asked to be the resident choreographer for the ABC series featuring Reg Livermore, which was called I'm All Right Now. Reg's leading ladies were Tony Lamond, Ruth Cracknell, Shirley Cameron and Sue Walker. Dances were performed by the William Gill Dancers. Bill also teamed up with one of his dancer friends from Annie Get Your Gun, Wendy Self, and as the duo William Gill and Wendy, they toured clubs and also did some television work. 
Bill also choreographed some ballets for the Halliday Dance Studio and formed a small company to do ballet performances in schools. He was a very busy boy. And in addition to all of that, William renewed his friendship with Phyllis Danaher, and he was asked by Phyllis to assist in the choreography of ballets being produced by Ballet Theatre of Queensland. I also became involved and was invited to do costume and scenery design. We went to Brisbane on several occasions to fulfil these tasks. Here is a newspaper publicity clipping which has come to light. It says, Sky High Ballet. Yesterday, when members of the Ballet Theatre of Queensland worked on the roof of the MMI building in Queen Street City against an impressive backdrop of Brisbane's newest skyscrapers, working with dancers Inara Svalby lift, and Leslie Hammond were Leslie Peterkin, extreme right, set and costume designer, and William Gill, choreographer, both of Sydney, who are assisting in the production of The Snow Maiden, which will be staged by the Ballet Theatre with Her Majesty's Theatre from November the 18th. In the latter part of the 1960s, I was teaching primary school and also teaching pottery at the Mossman Evening College. I suggested to Bill that he should teach classical ballet there as well, which he did. But towards the end of the 1960s, I said to him, why don't we combine our skills of ballet and art and craft and open a studio of ballet and pottery? The result of this idea became the Studio 52A. We hired a very large space in Spit Junction and converted it to a very nice ballet studio at the front and my pottery studio at the rear. William had told me many times how he would like to establish a ballet company for the city of Sydney. So with the Studio 52 up and running, he was able to set his dream in motion. He decided to call the company after London's Festival Ballet and he called it Sydney Festival Ballet Company. He then began to plan the first season which was to be in May 1971. It was not difficult for Bill with his connections to the ballet schools in Sydney and to the ballet world in general to audition young dancers for the corps de ballet for the first season. In London's Festival Ballet, William had become very close friends with the Australian ballerina Marilyn Burr, who had recently married the wonderful Hungarian dancer Ivan Nagy, the then premier dancer of the American Ballet Theatre. Marilyn and Ivan kindly agreed to accept Bill's invitation to be the guest artists for the first season. But of course we needed a venue for the first season, so what better place that could have been but the Orpheum Theatre in Cremorne, owned by the Vigona family. When we approached them about hiring the theatre, they were most enthusiastic and agreed to a very reasonable hiring fee. The Cremorne Theatre had been a live theatre in earlier times, and all the paraphernalia, the flyers for the scenery, lovely front curtain and so on, were all intact, although some maintenance was needed to mend holes in the stage and to reopen the dressing rooms. Rehearsals for the first season began in earnest. William settled upon a quite ambitious programme, and I must say that his ability to reproduce the choreography from the classical ballets was quite remarkable. He had a wonderful memory. It might be easiest for me to talk about the season by thumbing through the relevant pages from the printed program. Bill chose this hot pink colour for the program cover 
which was the same color as the front door of our studio 52a but the mossman council made us change it because it was too hot for split junction this is the page with the details of the management and the company artistic director william gill executive director les Pedic and company director susan walker and administrator john bush john was an accountant and he wisely suggested that we form a proprietary limited company which proved in the end to be a very wise move the artists of the sydney festival ballet company marilyn burr ivan nagy barbara chambers carl willander and cynthia mayan Barbara was a contemporary of Bill's from the Borovansky Company and the Australian Ballet. Carl was from the Australian Ballet and Cynthia was an Australian dancer from the Royal Ballet. And below is a list of the members of the Corps de Ballet. Production credits were stage manager a friend of ours called margaret murphy i coordinated scenery and costumes another contemporary of bills from borovansky and the australian ballet mary duchene was the dance directress another friend did sound and lighting and costumes by yet another friend pam hamilton who called herself monette and on this page is Mary Duchesne and Bill uh, conducting rehearsals. I mentioned friends, and we had many willing helpers, as Bill said, in the program. Our company has been founded on the traditions of classical ballet, and it is our desire to present and encourage the classical dance to form a link with the great masters. In the formation of this company, we are greatly indebted to the tremendous effort, enthusiasm and encouragement of all our friends, without whose help we could never have undertaken such a task. The interest and concern shown by the people of Sydney has been of great comfort and satisfaction to us. This resident company will offer our many talented dancers the opportunity to perform with guest artists of world standard, the setting and magnificent facilities being provided by our Opera House will enhance the hope of Sydney becoming a world centre for ballet. William Gill. Among our sponsors was the Sydney retail business Walton's Limited, who wrote, We congratulate you, your producer, Mr. Peterkin, and your company director, Miss Sue Walker, on your courage and foresight in founding the Sydney Festival Ballet Company. We know that with your dedication to the progress of ballet, the Sydney Festival Ballet Company will become world famous in the years to come. And the State Minister for Cultural Affairs, the Honourable G. F. Freudenstein, said this, This inaugural season of the Sydney Festival Ballet Company marks a truly significant step forward in the cultural life of this wonderful city of ours, a city which until now has not had its own resident ballet company. While tremendously exciting and appropriate, it is for our own Marilyn Burr, with her husband Ivan Nagy, to return to Sydney as the festival's prima ballerina. Miss Burr initially left Australia to dance for London's Festival Ballet. I am delighted to be able to welcome the formation of the company in my new ministerial capacity and wish it every success for the future. The Honourable G.F. Freudenstein. And now for the program. The first ballet choreographed by William was Prelude Nocturne in Waltzes. Then Marilyn and Ivan chose one of three pas de deux. Then there was Grand Pas de Sea Classique, or choreographed by Bill. The wonderful Le Corsair Pas de Deux performed by Barbara Chambers and Carl Willander. And Act Two of The Nutcracker filled the second half of the program. Here are some of the few surviving photographs 
from that wonderful season. The first season was a great success, both artistically and financially. William was keen to get started straight away to plan the second season, which was to be in August 1972. Uh, Bill decided that we should travel to London and New York with the aim of recruiting guest artists for the second season. In London, we met up with the Royal Ballet ballerina, Georgina Parkinson, who graciously accepted Bill's invitation to join us for the second season. In New York, we entertained Russian ballerina Natalia Makarova to coffee, uh, but she wasn't so keen on the idea of coming to Australia and dancing for us. It was Ivan Nagy who was responsible for recruiting three of the stars who appeared in the second season. Sousa Kun, a contemporary of Ivan's from the, ballet, from the Budapest State Opera Ballet, and Ronnie Mahler and Peter Malik, both well-known dancers from the United States. Australian dancers who joined us for the second season were former Australian ballet dancers Barbara Chambers and Warren de Maria, and Lawrence Raphael, former principal dancer of the Royal Ballet, and Laurie's wife Priscilla also played the mother in Giselle. Uh, and another promising young dancer was Danilo Radajevic, who was engaged by Bill and who performed the uh, male role in the, uh, the peasant part of her in Act One of Giselle. All of the young dancers who successfully auditioned for the second season went on to further their careers as professional ballet dancers and joined uh, the Australian Ballet, the Netherlands Dance Theatre or the American Ballet Theatre to name some of them. In the first season the ballets were performed to recorded music and it is important to, to mention here that William decided to engage a, a symphony orchestra for the second season. Bill was very good friends with the Australian ballet conductor Noel Smith and Noel agreed to form a 36-piece orchestra for him. While we were in New York, we were introduced by Ivan to the director of the Tchaikovsky Foundation and it was here that we were able to acquire on loan to begin with all the full orchestral scores for the ballets that were to be performed. Here is a photograph of Noel Smith and Dale Ringland unpacking the mounds of scores when they arrived from New York. All rehearsals, both ballet and orchestra, were conducted in the Studio 52A. There were to be two programs alternating on every other performance. First program was a series of divertisements and excerpts from ballets, as seen here. Swan Lake Act Two, Carnival, the Pardieu from Romeo and Juliet, the Paquita Pardieu, and after interval, Act Two of Capelia. They were all selected by Bill to be vehicles to display the wonderful talents of the guest artists. The second program was the full-length Giselle, and it featured Susa Kuhn and Ivan Nagy in the leading roles. 
the guest artist arrived and rehearsals were in full swing. Here is a lovely photograph of Marilyn and Ivan when they arrived with their young three-year-old daughter, Oniko, for the second season. We received a lot of publicity for the season, mainly through the Sydney Morning Herald. Our close friend, Mr. Walter O'Donoghue, an executive from Walton's Limited, organised most of our publicity for this season. Walter himself, a ballet enthusiast, had been married to Borobansky ballerina Phyllis Kennedy, and he was very keen to help us and to, to promote uh, the ballet company. I was able to trace most of the publicity from the Sydney Morning Herald archives, and I apologise for the poor quality of the reproductions, but it does give an idea of the publicity received, and I will talk about some of these uh, articles. On the left, a lovely photo of Kathleen Gorham, whose student, Carol Green, was selected for the corps de ballet. More about Carol a little later. It also mentions the fact that I painted all the backdrops for the ballets at the Manly Church Hall. And it also talks about the need for funding and the lack of it so far. In the middle, Leonie Woodnut jumps for joy at the Wollamaloo Nursery School. And on the left, Hungarian ballerina Sutakun says, dance always or grow fat. With the Opera House and City Buildings as a backdrop, dancers from the Sydney Festival Ballet Company perform at a fete and charity day at Admiralty House yesterday for the Freedom from Hunger campaign. Dancing an excerpt from Carnival, uh, Columbine, Barbara Chambers, Williams in the middle, and Lawrence Raphael as Harlequin. Ballerina Ronnie Marla of New York views Sydney Harbour from Cremorne Point yesterday. Ronnie, who arrived in Sydney on Friday, is a member of the National Ballet Company of Washington and will appear in the Sydney Festival Ballet Company, which opens next Saturday. There is a mention here about a party given by Walter O'Donoghue and his wife, Tricia, where Leslie Walford met Tuta Kun and the other guest artists, as well as Bill and I, of course, uh, and also at the party were conductor Noel Smith and ballet critic Beth Dean. On the left, Denise Nunn goes to the streets at Woolloomooloo, and on the right, Shane Cole goes to the rocks at Angel Place. This Leonie Woodnut of Double Bay poses with a, a 100 pound consignment of Tchaikovsky music sent by air to the Sydney Festival Ballet Company on loan from the Tchaikovsky Foundation in New York. The company will present a season at the Cremorne Orpheum from August the 26th. Presenting both sides of Mr. Peterkin. Leslie Peterkin confesses to be something of a Jekyll and Hyde character, for he's equally at home executing a graceful ballet leap or launching a fearsome karate attack. Peterkin, an executive director of the Sydney Festival Ballet Company, was pictured below at Balmoral Beach getting into trim for the company's international season opening on August the 26th. Bill had this incredible idea, which resulted on a trip by tugboat out to a boy, a huge boy on Sydney Harbour, and Carol Green was to pose in her Swan Lake costume on the boy for this fantastic bit of publicity. Carol was petrified, so she said. <laughs> I don't have the paper cuttings, for, but these were also publicity photos, Carol Green and Warren de Maria, uh, the corps de ballet girls in the, taken in the studio. And uh, this is a lovely photograph of 
Barbara Chambers in the cherry dress uh, for the ballet carnival. And I was also able to find three of the ballet crits written by ballet critique Jill Sykes for the second season. Apart from the programs and what I've shown here, there are no other photographic records from the two seasons. But one story I must relate is that the ballerina Georgina Parkinson put on a turn one night and wouldn't go on for Swan Lake Act 2. So William hastily said to Carol Green, put on your Swan Lake uh, costume, you are to dance Odette, the Swan Queen, with Ivan Nagy. Carol did, and she performed brilliantly. This was mentioned in the only other written record of the Sydney Festival Ballet Company, which is in Edward Pask's book, Ballet in Australia, the Second Act. He devoted one and a half pages uh, to the two seasons. This is what he said. Carol Green, a highly talented young Melbourne student from Kathleen Gorham's school, was accorded the honour of dancing Odette in Swan Lake Act II, partnered by no less than Ivar Nagy. His descriptions otherwise are quite accurate and his praises for the work are quite uh, generous. His final line, after such a promising season, nothing more was heard or seen of the Sydney Festival Ballet. And the reason for that was that although the season was very well attended, we didn't get enough ticket sales to cover the cost of the production. And without funding, we literally went down the drain. Bill insisted that all of the artists, both ballet and orchestra, were to be paid. We were hounded by our creditors and officially sued by most of them. We were placed in receivership and eventually both Bill and I very ungraciously appeared before the Honourable Sir Lawrence Street, who duly wound up the Sydney Festival Ballet Company. A sad end to a wonderful dream. Thank you for watching.